In this last set of slides dealing with estimation of spatial regression models, we take a slightly different approach. So, so far, we have fully specified the form of the spatial dependence, and we have used either a spatial autoregressive, autoregressive specification in, in the model itself or a spatial autoregressive specification in, for the error term. Uh, here we take a different approach, and um, the hack or heteroscedastic and autocorrelation consistent covariance matrix estimation is where we don't specify the particular form for the spatial uh, autocorrelation, but we take a kind of a catch-all approach, very similar to the uh, familiar white heteroscedastic consistent covariance matrix. So uh, first I'll cover the standard results from the econometric literature dealing with heteroscedasticity and time series autocorrelation, and then I'll move on to the spatial version. So the key approach and the key principle here, which is different from before, is that we don't specify a particular, particular functional form for the spatial autocorrelation, but we, we let it be generic. Of course, um, that has consequences, and it won't be as generic as um, we may think, but it will be very general. And this will allow us to stay with the OLS, or two-stage least squares, estimation. And the advantage of that, in, in, in OLS in particular, is that the least squares ordinary least squares estimate is consistent is not only consistent but also unbiased even in the presence of autocorrelation in the error term the problem is how to estimate the variance covariance matrix for the error term so that is what we focus on here so first the consistent covariance estimates from the standard econometric literature to put things into perspective and um, in general we can write the model as we've done before as I, y as a function of x beta plus error, error vector u, and the actor, uh, error has a general variance covariance matrix omega. So omega can include both heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation, and we don't specify a particular, particular functional form for that. Uh, it's a standard result for ordinarily squares that its variance in the presence of a general variance covariance matrix for the error terms takes the form of this expression. And you'll see, you see all these 1 over n's, but if you look very carefully, you see that they all cancel out. So in practice, in actual computations, we won't actually use those, or in many cases, we will not use them. But we need them because the Asymptotic properties are all about averages, and that's why we need this 1 over n for to rescale things to a common scale. Otherwise, everything would become huge in the limit, and the 1 over n keeps that from happening. So the key challenge here is how do we estimate this middle term, 1 over n, x prime omega x? And the classic result by white, the initial classic result by white, is that we don't actually attempt to estimate omega. Uh, because basically, in all but the simplest cases, omega has too many parameters in it. Uh, for example, in the case of uh, general heteroscedasticity, we have an instance of the incidental parameter problem, in that we have as many variances as we have observations. So that doesn't really work. But we can develop an estimator for this quadratic form, or uh, essentially an, an average in the limit of a quadratic form, which only is of dimension k by k. So it's much smaller than the dimension of omega, which is n by n, the size of the number of observations. And the elements of this matrix, uh, let's call it Q, in the limit are all sums of cross products. So the elements of the K by K matrix for um, each um, 
vector of k parameters, k uh, observations for x at an observation i, a location i, and a location j is the sum over all the cross products of xi times xj prime. So xi is a column, xj is a row, so this product is a little k by k matrix, and that k by k matrix is scaled by sigma ij. So right there we see that th this is not going to work because if we want to estimate each sigma ij, then we're back to the original problem of estimating omega, but we won't actually do that. Uh, things will simplify through the averaging. So um, that's the principle. So we stick with the OLS estimation or two-stage least squares as the case may be and um, find a general estimate for the k by k variance covariance matrix term in the middle, the weighting term. <clears throat> As I mentioned, the classic case is in a paper in Econometrica in 1980 by Halbert White uh, that dealt with the heteroscedasticity case. So in a heteroscedastic model, each diagonal element is a different variance term for the error term, and we can estimate, we can conceptualize of Q as the average of the sums over I of all the cross products. So these are n cross products of um, n of the scaling factor sigma squared i and the k by k matrix xi and xi prime. And we don't actually estimate um, each sigma i squared separately, but uh, the, the very powerful and general result of of white is that the estimator that replaces um, sigma squared i in this expression by the squared residuals is a consistent estimator. And so with that estimator in hand, we now have an, an expression for the variance of the um, OLS estimator that is robust to heteroscedasticity of unknown form. So the estimate doesn't change. What changes are its standard errors and, of course, uh, the associated t-tests and inference. And so this was a very powerful result, and there are some um, several papers that build on this and have some adjustments to make sure that the estimator, to improve on the estimator S0 in an efficiency sense, but it is consistent. And then in the late 80s and early 90s, there was an extension of this idea to the temporal, to the time series context. And the extension is um, using the expression we had before, the average of the double sum over the all the cross products between the variables. These are all k by k matrices, and uh, each weighted by the covariance term sigma ij. So this doesn't work. There's too many terms. There, the average is over n, but there are n squared terms. So uh, the way to approach this, as we always do, is to impose some structure. In a time domain, this structure consists of uh, a decay in the correlation as the time lag is, la is larger. So um, closer observations in time are more correlated. And then beyond a certain lag, beyond a certain time, there is no more correlation. So um, this is provides a structure, and in in essence, it zeroes out part of these all these cross products. Uh, and in addition, there's a second. So this ensures that we can actually estimate the the the, the term Q that we have enough structure so that we're not end up with n square uh, things to estimate. But in addition, because a variance covariance matrix needs to be positive definite, we need to make sure that that's the case. We didn't have to worry about that for the uh, heteroscedastic, the pure heteroscedastic case, because that's just a diagonal matrix with squared elements, so they're all positive, so that that is not something we have to worry about. But 
with the covariances, we do have to worry about it, and it's not at all automatic. So the results of Newey West and Andrews and some others um, built an, an estimator for this Q, which consists of two parts. They actually split apart the heteroscedastic part, which is just the same as before, and then the covariance part. And the covariance part consists of uh, sums of sample covariances, uh, sample covariances that are set to zero beyond a certain time lag. And then, in addition, there are weights. These weights are called Bartlett weights. They're simply a function of the lag terms. And these weights are uh, put in at certain distance decay, which then ensures the positive definiteness of the matrix Q, the estimate. So there's two components to Q. One is S0, which deals with the heteroscedasticity scedasticity, same as in the white approach. And then the second part is a double sum over the different time lags of the WH, the weights, the Bartlett weights, cross products of the error terms for the specific time lag and the two K by K matrices for the observations on X corresponding to the different the two time periods that are a lag H apart. So this, in a sense, then generalizes the heteroscedastic approach in the time series domain to time series autocorrelation of a general unknown form. It doesn't affect the estimate of the OLS. The estimate stays the same, but it yields a new set of standard errors, new set of T statistics, and new inference.